to... Oh, this is the one I really wanted to read. Okay. I was looking for this one specifically. This one made me cry. Okay. We're going to read this next one, which is by... Vox Teraptor. Content warning. Major character death. Implied other character deaths. Angst. Just pure pain and crying. This is one of my favorites. So let me change the music to even more tragic. Oh no, this one? Oh yes, this one. Are you guys ready? Lots and lots of pain. Taking a deep breath, Folga stares at the horizon. He's resting at the top of the hill where a singular oak tree resides. His back leans on the trunk, letting the memories flood his mind. He's been alive for a millennium. Only a few more hours, and he knows that the heavens will be taking the life they've given him. No amount of battery and material replenishing will change that. His physical body can survive multiple hits, but his spirit is deteriorating. Organ knows he can't do anything about it, so there's no point in fretting over it. It's okay, Olga tells himself repeatedly in his head. It's okay. I've lived a good life. As Folger closes his eyes, he hears familiar footsteps get near him. Hello, Vox. You're dying. It's not a question. It's a statement. There's a shake in Vox's voice that Volga has heard from before. A shake that was heard when Ike, Mister, and Luca died. A painful reminder that being immortal means that you'll see everyone go, and that you'll have no choice but to stay. I'm sorry. Knowing the familiar pain of losing people close to him, Volga can only apologize for giving his friend, brother, the same pain he felt from losing Sonny, Albert, and Yugo. This is as far as I can go, Vox. Don't apologize. It's not your fault. Vox sits next to him. Have you told Uki? How about Millie? They surely would love to know about this. Fuck. Olga's heart aches from thinking about the two other people close to him. He apologizes again and again in his head. He prays for them to forgive him for leaving them behind. Swallowing the lump in his throat, Olga answers. Pretty sure Uki knew before I did. Something about his freaky powers, sensing a person's life force and shit. He chuckles, pain seeping out of it. Nearly though, I... Thinking of the person he considers as his sister brings tears to his eyes. I can't bear to tell her, Vox. It would break her heart. I know she would try to bring me back to life. I can't watch her cry, man. Vox nods. I understand. He moves close to the cyborg. Rookie's coming. I hope you know that. I know. I can feel him near. As if on cue, the sound of a running man gets louder by the second. Volga opens his eyes and sees a distraught psychic in front of him panting. Hello, Uki. Volga smiles in the soft way he only does for Uki. You're such a fucking bitch, Fuchan. Uki sobs as his knees give out. He holds Volga's left hand with both of his palms. You never even came to us to say goodbye. Volga raises his right hand and weakly wipes away Yuki's tears. Don't cry. This is why he never wanted to say goodbye. Goodbyes are too painful of an experience. You told me before, back when our first friend died, that when a soul leaves, they turn into a star. The sun is setting slowly turning the sky into the comforting darkness. Just look up at the night sky for me when I leave, Uki. Olga can see the other's hands shake as he sobs harder. I'll be right up there guarding you with all our other friends, okay? It's like I never even left. Whenever you look up, I'll 
will shine brighter than all the other stars up there, so you'll know it's me. Leaning on Folga's palm, Uki whispers, I thought I was ready. I've known for three months, but I just... Uki closes his eyes. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. I can't lose you. Everyone has already left. I can't lose you too. Futan, don't leave me, please. Uki is trying to give him more life force. Uki, stop. The sternness makes the psychic halt. You can't do this. You know it. You've tried it when Alvin was dying. It didn't work before. It won't work now. God fucking damn it! A surge of power comes from Uki, making harsh winds pass them by briefly. I'm sorry. Folger lets his tears flow. He hates that he's the one inflicting such pain on his friends. I'm really sorry. If the damn star never fell down on me, I wouldn't be losing you like this. Uki sniffles, cursing every heavenly being in existence. If it didn't fall on you, I wouldn't have met you. Folger chuckles. I'm glad that a star has fallen in your eye. Uki silently hugs Folger tightly. It goes on for such a long time before Vox pulls the psychic from the cyborg. He's about to leave, Uki. You have to let it go. The demon has been crying. Folger didn't notice that. Vox has to coax Uki repeatedly before he finally lets go. Vogue feels weak. The only thing he can move are the eyelids and head, blinking and looking at them. Before he lets himself leave, a witch's voice shouts, Fuchan! This is what I've been dreading. Vogue cries as he sees his sister, friend, running towards him. Oh, please. Millie can't see me like this. She doesn't deserve to have the final memory of me looking like this. Millie, Folger whispers. He hates how weak his voice sounds. He hates how Millie is crying. She's always supposed to be happy. She's supposed to be laughing and smiling. He hates how he's also taking those away from her. Vox and Uki move aside, knowing that the two need their moment. Millie tackles Folger into a hug sobbing loudly into his ear. Don't go. Don't go. I can... I can make potions for you. I'm an immortal witch. I can search the whole world for you. Please just don't go. She wails, feeling the life force slowly leaving his body. Stop. Stop taking him from me. Olga wants to do a lot of things. He wants to hug Millie back. He wants to reassure his crying friends. He wants to stay. But no matter how much he wants to do any of those things, he can't. Millie. Olga cries out to her again. His voice is just a whisper. I'm sorry. Millie simply cries, gripping Folga's shoulders tightly. I can't stay anymore. Millie shakes her head. No, 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 no. She looks up to the sky. You've taken too much from me. Stop it. Stop taking him. Knowing that he can't stop her anymore, Volga says his final goodbye. Thank you. Takes one deep breath. I love you. Olga takes in the vision of his friends before letting death take him. Screaming in despair, Millie hugs Folga's corpse tightly. Her tears decorate his face. Uki kneels down again, 
hugging the small woman onto her chest. Although he knows it's useless, he whispers words of comfort into her ear. Uki looks up. A new star shines brighter than any other stars in the sky, guiding the light on him. Uchan, he whispers. Let me correct that. Uchan, he whispers. With his heart broken, Fox leaves the two behind, crying silently as he walks away. They've lost a good friend and brother. The curse of immortality. I really like that one. That's written so well. It hits you so good in the feels. Oh, God. It has so many important characters to me in it. How dare you make me say the L word. It wasn't even lesbians. It was the actual L word. How fucking dare you. <laughs> so that one, which I've just liked and retweeted, was by M. Boxtoe Raptor on Twitch. It was beautiful. And it was tragic. And it was perfect. <sighs> Depression time? I know. Good morning, everyone, for whom it's morning. Good evening for everyone who is using this as a sleep aid and is now crying their eyes out. I'm telling my therapist about this. That sounds like a you problem. <laughs> mm. Let's see. 